air embolism that's what we are going to discuss in this topic we'll talk about both venous air embolism and arterial air embolism definitely arterial air embolism is more catastrophic than venous air embolism so what is air embolism how do we define air embolism right from definition to the condition in which air embolism can happen what is the pathophysiology then what would be the clinical features how do we make the diagnosis what is the differential diagnosis how do we do the management everything we will discuss in this section so starting with the definition of air embolism simply air embolism that is entrainment of air in the circulation if it is pulmonary circulation it is venous air embolism or pulmonary air embolism we call it if it's an arterial circulation we call it arterial air embolism so writing the definition the definition says that air embolism air embolism is an uncommon uncommon but potentially catastrophic but potentially catastrophic catastrophic event that occurs due to entry of air in the vasculature that occurs as a consequences of consequences of the entry the entry of air into the vasculature into the vasculature so if i make this definition in one line i would say entrainment of air in circulation i would say entrainment entrainment of air in circulation and on the basis that the circulation is divided into two types the arterial and the venous the air embolism can also be divided into venous air embolism or we also call it pulmonary air embolism and arterial air embolism so venous air embolism which is also called pulmonary air embolism pulmonary air embolism and this occurs this occurs when air occurs when air enters the systemic venous circulation the systemic venous circulation and travels to the right ventricle and pulmonary circulation and travels to the right ventricle and pulmonary circulation primarily ventricle and pulmonary circulation right so air is entering into the systemic venous circulation so it's called venous air embolism it is traveling to the pulmonary circulation it's called pulmonary air embolism now next is your arterial air embolism when the air goes enters the systemic arterial circulation more serious than venous air embolism and can cause organ ischemia because it can cause air block and air lock or air lock block whatever you call and it can affect the blood supply to that particular organ so arterial air embolism arterial air embolism now this is when air enters when air enters arterial circulation arterial circulation this is more serious than venous circulation venous air embolism so more serious right than venous air embolism and this can cause the arterial air embolism can cause organ ischemia depending upon the organ supplying the artery supplying the blood vessel getting supplying the organ getting affected right so it can also cause organ ischemia okay okay so air embolism as i said divided into venous and the arterial air embolism now we should need to know why this air embolism will happen air is present in atmosphere how would it get embolized in the vasculature to for air embolism to happen two things should be fulfilled so i would explain it with an example so air embolism can only happen if there is a direct communication between the source of air and the vasculature 
right so number 1 when there is direct communication communication between source of air source of air and the vasculature and vasculature so if there is an open vessel there would be a direct communication between the source of air which is present in the atmosphere atmospheric air and the vasculature but would it always get in, the air would get sucked into the circulation no if there is a pressure gradient difference in the pressure then only it will be sucked in so the second thing which is required pressure gradient pressure gradient favoring the air in the circulation so pressure gradient favoring air in circulation so if the vessel has a less pressure atmospheric than the atmospheric air then the gradient would move the air from atmosphere into the vessel so what could be the clinical example when this air embolism can happen so surgeon has made a surgical incision this is a direct communication between the air and the vessel vasculature and the site where the surgical incision is made it is above the flavo flavoplastic axis of the body above the heart so if the site of the incision is above the heart then a negative pressure is present in the vessels and further the pressure is less if patient is having hypotension and this would favor the gradient and would favor the sucking in of the air into from the circulation into the vasculature so example as i said example surgical incision surgical incision which is a direct communication between atmosphere and air and the level of surgical incision level of surgical incision right level of surgical incision so in neurosurgery in neurosurgery in ent procedures right it is above the phlebostatic axis the site is above the phlebo static axis of the body that is right atrium above the right atrium so the negative pressure is created a negative venous pressure is created so this creates a negative venous pressure and this creates the gradient higher the gradient in case of hypotension and this favors the embolism of the atmospheric air into the vasculature so these are the two important things which are required okay so we discussed the types of air embolism and why air embolism is happening now what will this air getting embolized into the into the vasculature will do we'll talk about the pathophysiology and to understand the pathophysiology for so we'll i'll discuss the pathophysiology of uh venous air embolism separately and arterial air embolism separately now remember both venous and arterial air embolism we they the air embolized in the vasculature can have direct effects and can have some indirect effects okay so we'll talk about everything so let's talk about pathophysiology of venous air embolism first so venous air embolism that is air in the venous circulation air in venous circulation venous circulation so let us talk about the direct effect and indirect effect first the what would be the direct effect of the air in the circulation so small amount of the air can be removed by the pulmonary circulation so pulmonary vascular bed can absorb small amount of air but if when it overpass that then it could create an obstruction and this would or this obstruction can affect the ventilation perfusion of the uh, of the body also and can also affect the cardiac output of the body so small amount small amount of air can be removed air can be removed from pulmonary vascular bed pulmonary vascular bed right by gas diffusion gas diffusion right across the the arterial wall by the gas diffusion but if the capacity is overwhelmed but if capacity is overwhelmed right capacity is over 
whelmed then what will happen then it will cause obstruction it will cause obstruction this air will cause obstruction now all the clinical features of the direct effect is because of this obstruction so obstruction will affect the pulmonary arterial outflow tract and this will affect the return of blood into the left ventricle so cardiac output will decrease right so this obstruction will cause the pulmonary in the pulmonary outflow tract so this will lead to the reduction in this will lead to reduction in left ventricle preload and this will cause decrease in cardiac output so this is the direct effect so what will happen in the pulmonary outflow tract will affect the pulmonary venous the air will be embolized this will go into pulmonary capillaries and from pulmonary capillaries it will go into the pulmonary artery right so it will go into the pulmonary artery and everywhere it will cause obstruction and all this will lead to decrease in the left ventricle preload and when left ventricle preload will decrease right what will happen the left ventricle preload will decrease the cardiac output and patient will go into shock so hemodynamic collapse can happen but this will only happen when a huge amount of air has been embolized and it has overwhelmed the capacity of the pulmonary vasculature to diffuse it out to clear to clear it out okay so this is the direct effect which will lead to hypotension and uh, uh, hypotension and uh, your uh, cardiovascular collapse now when will this happen now this direct effect is more evident depend it depends upon two things the amount of air embolized and the rate of air embolized right so the detrimental effect detri mental effect of venous embolism venous embolism depends upon the total volume total volume and rate of entrainment rate of entrained air rate of entrained air so what has been suggested that 300 to 500 ml air can be detrimental for the patient right in the pulmonary vasculature and even more if the rate of entrainment is 100 ml per second this 100 ml per second is fatal so 100 ml per second air entrainment can be fatal and 300 to 500 ml air embolized in the pulmonary circulation can produce a cardiovas cardiopulmonary collapse in the patient so this is because of the direct effect of venous air embolism now what could be due to indirect effect what is the indirect effect so coming on indirect effect of venous air embolism indirect effect now this small air bubbles in the pulmonary circulation can damage the pulmonary endothelium and this can lead to the release of the inflammatory mediators like neutrophil platelets into the circulation and because of this release of these inflammatory mediators non cardiogenic pulmonary edema can happen in the patient so air bubbles air bubbles in the pulmonary circulation in the pulmonary microcirculation micro circulation are associated with local endothelial damage associated with local endothelial damage and this can lead to accumulation of neutrophils this can lead to the accumulation of neutrophils right then platelets right the fibrins and all this can cause non cardiogenic pulmonary edema non cardiogenic pulmonary edema bronchoconstriction bronchoconstriction hypoxemia and it would decrease the lung compliance hypoxemia and it will decrease the lung compliance so the indirect effect can happen even with small microemboli which can damage the pulmonary which is present in the pulmonary microcirculation and damage the endothelium and cause the release of these factors okay and the clinical features will be because of non cardiogenic pulmonary edema developing in the patient bronchoconstriction hypoxemia and lung compliance 
would decrease because of the accumulation of the fluid in the interstitial space between alveoli and the endothelium. Okay, so this is the indirect effect. So all the clinical features are because of the direct effect, the detrimental effect, the direct effect because of which the cardiorespiratory collapse can happen. But this will only happen when a huge amount of air is embolized. But in case of small amount of air also embolized, the indirect effect, through indirect effect, right, these clinical features, the pathophysiology can develop a lot of clinical features. Now, let us talk about arterial air embolism, arterial embolism. Now, arterial embolism has three diff distinct process, I mean, by three ways it can happen. So, it can happen by three distinct process, right. One incomplete filtration of the air from the pulmonary capillaries. So, it can, the micro emboli can travel to the systemic capillaries through the pulmonary capillaries, right. So, first,